In this model, when you remove the ramus of the mandible and the sternocleidomastoid muscle, some of the muscles that move the hyoid become visible. You can see the greater horn of the hyoid bone right over here. The hyoid bone is not attached to any other bone, but movements of the hyoid bone affect three compartments because it is on the floor of the oral cavity, it is in front of the pharynx, and it is above the larynx. It is not surprising then that a large number of muscles and ligaments attach to the hyoid. Two of these muscles are the stylohyoid, and you can see the posterior belly of the digastric muscle here. Let's talk about these two muscles. The stylohyoid has an origin on the base of the styloid process and inserts on the lateral part of the body of the hyoid, which you can't really see from this view. During swallowing, it pulls the hyoid posteriorly and superiorly. The digastric muscle is called the digastric because it has two fleshy bellies connected by a tendon which attaches to the body of the hyoid. You can only see the posterior belly here, which has an origin on the mastoid process of the temporal bone. We will see the anterior belly in another video. One of the actions of the digastric is to elevate the hyoid. From this view, you can see the anterior belly of the digastric muscle. The digastric muscle has an origin on the mandible and inserts on the hyoid bone by the tendon that is between the two bellies. We saw the posterior belly of the digastric muscle in a previous video. The digastric muscle elevates the hyoid. Immediately superior to the digastric muscle is the mylohyoid muscle. This muscle has an origin on the mylohyloid line on the inner surface of the mandible and inserts on the hyoid bone. The fibers from each side join the fibers of the muscle from the opposite side at a connective tissue seam which is called a raphe in Latin. The fibers of the mylohyoid muscle supports and elevates the floor of the mouth and elevates the hyoid.